your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Glory to God this morning. Good morning, Eric. Good morning, Yvette. Hallelujah. We will be in Micah chapter 5 if you want to find that in your Bibles. Amen. This morning. My allergies have my eyes on something. Good morning, Scott. You know it all wrong. Micah chapter 5. I pray this word encourages us this morning. We'll wait a few minutes as we try to get started at 5.05. Bless your name, Jesus. No other song compares to you, God. No other phrase. No other phrase restores my soul. Your spirit speaks to my soul. That's why I sing. Hallelujah. Lord, you're my song. Ah! The tone of power in the key of honor. Filled with glory. Lord, you are my song. Good morning. Good morning. Lord. In the key of honor, filled with glory. Hey, for your endless mercies and your love, loving kindness, pull my heart strings, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for being our song this morning. Thank you that we have a song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our song is not of misery. Hallelujah. Our God, our song is not of defeat. Our song is not of depression. Our song is not of oppression. Our song is not of, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Our song is not full of complaint and worry and fear. God, we thank you that you are our song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for the tone of power and the key of honor. <laughs> glory to God. And it's filled with your glory this morning. God, we thank you for your glory this morning. We thank you for your glory this morning. We thank you, God, that there is absolutely none like you in all the earth, God. Blessed be the name of you, O oh God, our Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless your name this morning, Sister Howard, Lady Howard. 
Hallelujah, God. We love you this morning, God. The tone of power, the key of honor is filled with your glory, God. Hallelujah. Our song, God, exalts you this morning. Our song lifts you up this morning. Our song praises you this morning. Our song says how great thou art. Our song says mighty is our king. Our song says you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Our song says I am victory. Hallelujah. Our song your song, your song, your song, your song, our song unto you says, thank you for loving us. Hallelujah, God. Our song unto you says, you are a kind God. You are a loving God. You are a patient God. Your mercy endures. Hallelujah. They're new every morning, every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. That is our song this morning. Bless your name, God. We thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for your love this morning. We thank you for your peace this morning. You are our song, God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. He is worthy to be praised. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Well, bless your names this morning. Bless the name of the Lord this morning. Bless each of you this morning. Forgive me constantly wiping my eyes, but my allergies are what they say on fleek. Good morning. They are, whoo, Jesus. They, they something this morning. So any of you who have allergies, you know my pain. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Norwood. So I wanted to, I, I was um, kind of vacillating over this thing about lifted hands. And I had ran across the scripture in Micah, Micah chapter 5, and I saw something. Good morning, Brother Robert. I saw something in scripture that really, I, I really was kind of puzzled by it, right? And the puzzling came because God enters this text in the first few, um, the first eight verses. And he's really, you know, acknowledging the children of Israel and, and what they've done that was so good. But then he switches up after verse 9. And so uh, what, what the scripture says, what the scripture says, Lord, let me find my glasses. What the scripture says is, and I want to read it into your hearing before I start teaching it. Because there is change that happens when you lift up your hands. Amen. He says in verse 1, Now gather your troops, you city of troops. We are under attack. Enemies will attack. Enemies will strike the judge of Israel on the cheek. He goes on and, and let me make sure we're in the right place here. Okay, yes. So he says, he says to the leaders of Israel, he said, you brethren, he said, you are too small to be included among the Judah cities. He's talking to Ephraim. He said, yet from Israel's future rulers will come from you. It'll come. These future rulers are going to come. Uh, uh, these clans of Judah. He said, they're going to come for me. He said, one who will be the ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old and ancient times. Therefore, Israel be, w Israel will be abandoned. He's warning them of what's going to happen. He says, until the time when she who is in labor bears a son. Now we can jump over to uh, Revelations where scripture starts to talk about the birth of Jesus and the pains and how the, the uh, serpent is there to try to stop this birth. And so he says, and the rest of the brothers will return to Israel to join the Israelites. He will stand and he will stand in the shepherd of his flock in the strength of the Lord. They're talking about Jesus. He said, and he will live securely for then his greatness will reach the ends of the earth. That's good news. He will be your peace. He will be your peace. We know what the scripture says. Jesus is our peace. And then he said, uh, uh, the Assyrians will invade the land. You'll march through. They'll march through your uh, uh, 
fortresses. He says there'll be seven shepherds that will come against you and eight commanders. So he's just warning them. He said, and you will, and he will deliver you from the Assyrians. So he's warning them, but he's also encouraging them, okay? He says, so all this stuff is going to happen, but you be encouraged. You might lose your job, but be encouraged. You might have challenges in your family, in your marriage, but be encouraged. Your children might be acting like they're from Mars, but be encouraged, amen? God is saying all of these things are going to happen, but you can be encouraged because God is with you. Amen, somebody. God is with you. He'll never leave you. We know what the scripture says. He'll never forsake you. But here in Micah, he's giving them all of these warnings and instructions to, to prepare them for what's to come. So let's keep reading. We're in verse uh, 7. He says, the remnant of Jacob, the remnant of Jacob will be in the midst of many people. He said, like, do on the grass. So you're not even going to know we're there. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, you're not even going to know they're there. But the remnant will be there. He said, good morning, my dear friend. Now, let me tell y'all something. My dear friend Donna just logged in. It is 5 a.m. here, and it is 2 a.m. in California. I love this girl, and I'm going to call you later on today if that's okay. Okay. He said, listen, no matter what you're going through, I'm going to be with you. He said, and my remnant, you, you who are listening to me, you who are believers in Jesus Christ. He said, you'll be among them like the dew on the grass, refreshing. Some of you, you have jobs that, honey, uh, if you ain't there, that whole place will fall apart because your presence brings a blessing into the establishment. Amen. And they need to know that. Hallelujah. Your your presence is like the dew in the morning on the grass. He said, he said, uh, and the dew and the dew on the grass, he said, it doesn't wait for anyone and it doesn't depend on anyone. No one tells the dew to fall except God. Hallelujah. It doesn't wait on anybody. It doesn't uh uh, order its life around who's going to walk on the grass, who's not going to walk on the grass, who's going to wake up before day to see the beauty of the dew. You just got to go about, beloved, doing what God has called you to do. Loving yourself, loving others, serving, doing what God told you to do. do the dew on the grass ain't stunting what nobody else is doing. It's just doing what it's supposed to do. And it knows, it knows that when the sun comes up, it's going to go away. But it has the opportunity to come back in the morning. So it's okay for you to know what your seasons are and what your times are. Amen? And so uh, Micah is telling them in Micah chapter 5, we were in verse 7, and he says, so we have this remnant. He said, we'll be in the midst of the people like the dew from the Lord who showers the grass in the morning and the dew does not wait for anyone and it doesn't depend on anyone. We must stop thinking that somebody else has to do it for us. I believe in divine connections. I believe in divine opportunities. I believe in divine doors and I pray and ask God to open them allergies y'all and to bring them every day bring that divine connection make that divine hookup do it lord for your glory but you don't have to depend on man i someone just asked me recently about the outcome of the men's conference we had on april the 7th they was like so did you finish it you know with without debt did you have to come out your pocket no god did it let me tell y'all something. I said this the last time we were on here. Literally, that conference was paid for. The conference was on Saturday. God had done that thing that we went into that conference on Thursday, debt-free. Bringing Dr. Bishop, Pastor Marvin Sapp. Taking care of the facility. Taking care of our musicians. Hallelujah. Serving the man a full lunch. God did it. And he's going to do it greater next year. Hallelujah, because of what I believe God has put in my spirit 
to take it to the next level. You don't have to wait on man. Cooperation and partnership, that's what we look for. But one of the things I think we're missing is the divine connection, the do connection that just comes from God, that just opens a door. Hallelujah. You need a job where you live, where you're going. God, make a divine connection. Just call somebody to cross my path. That's from there or when I go there, just make it happen, Lord. Set that thing up. Order my steps in your word. Be the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. We must, we got to depend on God because we can't depend on Washington. Good God Almighty. He said, the remnant of Jacob will be among the nations and in the midst of many people. He said, you'll be like a lion, beloved. He said, you'll be like a lion among the beast in the forest. He said, you'll be, you'll be like a full lion. And then he said, you'll be like a young lion amongst the flocks of sheep. Which, when he said, he said, and, and no one can rescue. When God tells you to go forth, he said, go forth. Don't be, oh, I don't want to maul the little pretty sheep. God ain't talking about you mauling the sheep of his people, of his pastorate in his church. Please don't do that. He said, but when you are among uh, the beast of the forest, when you are among people who do not want to acknowledge God, when you are among people who want to hold you back from what God is telling you to do, he said, you need to trample through that forest. He said, you need to blaze through that forest. You need to be as bold as a lion coming amongst the forest with anyone ever been in the forest the saying is like you can't see the forest for the trees because you're surrounded you're surrounded by trees and trees are they're tall trees they're thin trees some of their base can be feet long i've been in the forest and i'm telling you it can be scary <laughs> it can be scary the sounds it's beautiful and a lot of times when you come walk into a forest, you don't realize you're in the forest until you're in the forest. Because a lot of times you, you just kind of wander into it. And he said, he said, unless, you know, he said, but you will be in this forest among the beasts of the field. He said, but you're going to have victory. He said, when a, when a lion hunts, it tramples its victims and tears them to pieces, and there is no one that can rescue them. See, this is part of the problem, I think, with Christians. We think that we're supposed to be always, in every situation, meek and mild. Be integral, right? Which includes being honest and trustworthy, right? He said, but sometimes you got to be like a lion. He is the lion of Judah. Not only is he the sheep. Not only is he the lamb sacrifice, not only was Jesus the gate, the way, the shepherd, not only is the Holy Spirit fire <laughs> that the sacrifice went on and burns up everything that is unlike God. He is also the lion. He is the lion of Judah, bold in your praise. I'm going to get to the lifted hands piece, but your praise you coming into situations boldly with the confidence of God. Hallelujah. Coming in knowing I'm a lion. Hallelujah. And all the rest of y'all in this forest, because I'm the king of the jungle. I come from the king. Good God Almighty, I come from the king. So I don't have to worry about what's going on. The haters on my job. The haters... In my life, those on social media hating on you. Unfortunately, we got some haters in the church. I hate to say it, but it's the truth. Because we, we all, we you know, we all yet to be saved. Good God Almighty. So you got haters in the church. Maybe not your church, but the church overall. And so he said, you got to be like a lion amongst them. When you out in the community and you serving and you're doing the work and the will of God and the enemy, whether the enemy is in people or the enemy is in the community, or the enemy is in, uh, what is the word I want to say? Uh, the politics, the government, the city, whether you understand that there are, are, are uh, spirits that rule over cities and rule over regions, you need to understand these things. 
And a lot of times we're venturing in to these lands and into these forests and into these streets and into these communities and into these neighborhoods and into these new jobs and new relationships and marriages. And you don't understand the demons that are at work. And some of them don't manifest until, good God Almighty, you're out there. And you're in it. Or you've already said I do. Or you've already taken the job. Or you've already made the move. Listen. I will never forget. I'm talking about being in the forest. And we're going to get to your hands. We're going to get to the power of how your hands being lifted can change things. Right here in Micah. And hallelujah. And, and I remember. I went on a, a ministry assignment in Cleveland. And uh. Oh my God, the attack was crazy. I was literally up all night. Now, I don't believe in fighting the devil. The victory ain't ours, it's the Lord's. God will fight our battles. But you got to understand, when you are under spiritual attack, you better know what it looked like. It just ain't a headache. Sometimes it's just not that you tossing and turning. Good God Almighty. Sometimes it's not just that you, you, your, your stomach is upset. Sometimes the pressure that, that sits right here and comes up the back of your neck and finds itself sitting right here. Sometimes that is spiritual warfare. So I'm in Cleveland. And it was one of the first times, if not the first time, that I had traveled by myself and... The everything about that whole trip was amazing from how they took care of me getting there, how they took care of me when I got there, how they took care of me when I left with a check in hand. Good God Almighty. Everything about it was amazing. But this was also the first time that God had me minister uh, under um, a true powerful prophetic anointing to set people free from strongholds. Of course, I didn't know that that's why I was going, but the enemy knew why God was sending me. And when I tell you that that devil attacked me all night long because I went into the forest, I went surrounded, not understanding anything about regional spirits, about spirits that sit in a land and in an area. Every city that is under sound of my voice, there is a spirit ruling and reigning in your city. <clears throat> and it may be territorial. It may be on the east side. It may be on the west side. It may be on the south side. It may be on the, on the uh, east, east, north, south, east, west, wherever. It could be over the city. It could be territorial or it could be regional. Like you look at all of the cities in a, in a particular state, or you look at states in a particular, in the, in the center of a country or in the part of a country, they they listen, this, isn't this what the word tells us? Principalities, powers, and rulers that sit on high. That's what he said. And so we forget that these, these spirits are in operation. Good morning, brother Jesse. Hey, sis, sis. And so, uh, Chandra, so this is what we have to understand. So in Micah chapter five, he tells them, but as a lion, you can enter into that space and you can trample over your enemy. He said, he'll make your enemy your footstool. And sometimes we're too passive as Christians. I'm just going to pray for him. Something you do. You should always pray. That's what the Bible says. But sometimes you better put the word on it. You better put the word on it, the blood on it, in the name of Jesus. That demon right there, I will not have you attacking my family. That demon right there, you will not talk to me like that. I remember when I was engaged to someone, and uh, needless to say, I'm not married to him. Because that spirit rolls up on me. And I said to it, that right there, I'm not going to do. That right there, I'm not going to live with. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. That right there, hecky no. Uh-uh. I'm not going to marry Manic. But it didn't manifest itself until I was in it. Until I was in the forest. Till I was surrounded. Till I had the ring. That you think I'm going to say, okay, I got to stick with this because I didn't make the announcement to the world. Baby, let me tell you something. I don't care if the invitations have gone out. I don't care if you three days from it. Something show itself to you in the midst of your forest. 
You are lying. Oh, no, you're going to speak to it, and either you're going to get this together, we're going to push that date back, boo. What? People, we can wait, because that right there I won't do. Because we're, a lot of times we're in the midst of it. And because we're in the midst of it, we don't want to be embarrassed. We don't want to say we're in the forest, and the sounds are scary in the forest. I feel like I'm enclosed in the forest. I feel like I can't get out of this. I don't even know my way out. But you're a lion. That's what the word says. And the Bible says that as a lion, you can trample. He said, he says this when a lion hunts, when the lion is doing what it's created to do and is operating in its purpose. He says that lion will trample its, its enemies and they will tear them to pieces. Listen, I ain't got to curse you. I ain't got to plot against you. You ain't got to do none of that. You ain't got to curse them. You ain't got to plot against them. You ain't got to raise your voice. The blood. That right there. I tell you, the word, the blood, and Jesus, that's all you need. <laughs> Good morning. That's all you need. The word, the blood, and the name of Jesus. That's all you need. You put it on that stuff that you feel like you, you, you're surrounded. You're being attacked. Something is coming against you, but you got to remember. You're a lion. So this is where, this is where, this is where the passage changes. This is where, huh, Micah chapter 5, the passage changes. Jesus says, God says in his word, you will use your power, listen, against your opponents. Ah! You will use your power against your opponents and your enemies will be destroyed. You will, you will, one translation says, this is verse nine. Listen, y'all got to hear me. I hope y'all hear me. Let me just tell you, I'm reading from uh, God's word translation and the NIV because I got them both up right here. What the NIV says it this way. You will lift up your hands in triumph. He said over your enemies and your foes will be destroyed. God's word translation says, you will use your power. These hands right here. He said, you will use your power against your opponents. He said, and your enemies will be destroyed. Your lifting up your hands has the power to destroy your enemies. You lifting up your hands and surrender to God, not surrender to them, and surrender to God has the power to destroy your enemies. Hallelujah. He says, he says, your, your hands will be lifted up in triumph over your enemies. And this is where we have to get to, beloved. We have to understand the power of lifting our hands. Now, I want to hear, I want you to hear it in, I kind of want to hear it in the Amplified, but let me see how the Message Bible says it. Let's see what the Message Bible... The Message Bible says it this way. The Message Bible says... He says, you will pur... The, uh, the purge and settle companies, da 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 He said, da-da-da-da. Killing and devouring your, your enemies. He said, with your arms raised in triumph over your foes, your enemies will be no more. Listen. Before you ever come out swinging... Before you open your mouth, he said, lift up your hands. He said, lift up your hands. We have scripture throughout scripture. We know, we know what the word says in Exodus about Moses. He said, we know what it says, that when he lifted his hands, Israel got victory. When he, rent, when he lift, put them down, the enemy triumphed. It, Egypt was coming after him. Lifted his hands. The water stayed separated so that they could come through safe. His hands got tired before Aaron and her came and held them up. He said that the waters would start to fall in. Sometimes your issue, beloved, isn't that you don't know how to lift your hands. You just got tired. You just got tired of lifting your hands by yourself. You need somebody to help you lift your hands. You need an Aaron and you need a her. Sometimes you need Aaron and her in the same place. 
Sometimes it's enough that Aaron is over here and her is over here because you know how to pray from where you are. There is power in you lifting up your hands. Psalm says it like this. I will arise in the morning and fall to my knees and lift up my hands. You got to know before your hands go up, good God Almighty, that you have the victory. You got to know before your hands go up that you are triumphant. With my hands lifted up and my heart filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. Money funny, kids acting crazy, spouse tripping, job situation, car needing repairs, family member sick, family member facing a, 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 a sentencing or somebody in jail. Whatever it is, you got to know before you lift up your hands. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. With my hands lifted up. Going up, you got to already know that you have the victory. Going up. In praise, going up in prayer, going up with thanksgiving. You got to already know that you are victorious. You have to already know that your answer is coming from the Lord. There's victory in you lifting up your hands. There's victory in you understanding the power of your lifted hands. And, and the Amplified says it uh, like this. You know, I just, I, I love God's word. And it's so, I just, I, I really, I didn't used to like the Amplified, but, but now I do. Amen. I, I love the Amplified and how it, it just makes things a little, uh, in, another, in another light. It kind of breaks it down. And so he says it like this in the Amplified. He says, he says, your hands will be lifted up against your adversaries and your enemies shall be cut off and destroyed. Now, let me say this. You, you have to recognize what is an enemy. Enemies are not just unbelievers. Unbelievers are just unbelievers. An enemy is anyone who is coming against the purpose, the plan, and the will of God for your life. That becomes your enemy. You don't have to hate them. But you got to understand, when someone is coming against the plan and the will of God for your life, the purpose for your life, they're speaking against it. They're tearing it down. They're not, they're not bringing any hope to it. He said, that's an enemy. Now, let's bring it home. Sometimes that person or those persons can be close to us. And sometimes when people who are close to us do not know how to speak purpose into your life, who don't know how to build you up, it's not because they're plotting against your failure. Sometimes it's simply because they have a fear of you succeeding and leaving them behind. And so they become your enemy. Remember the movie Sleeping with the Enemy? It's an unfortunate truth, but sometimes there can be Someone in your life that's close to you that does not understand the purpose and the plan that God has for your life. And so a person who is actively, hear me, who is actively opposing you in a hostile way and wants to stop you from achieving something. Mm-hmm. They seek to harm you, not so that you can be hurt, but so that you can be stopped. It's an enemy. So they hurt you with, your, with their words. They hurt you with their actions. You got to learn how to pray against your enemy. And the way that you pray against your enemy is to lift up your hands. You got to lift up your hands. You met, This is where the power of agreement comes into prayer. Listen, these people at work, I know that promotion is mine. I know that job is mine. I know this thing is mine. 
where two or three are gathered, touching and agreeing upon anything, the Bible says that Jesus will be in the midst of you and that God will hear your prayers. Sometimes it's just you coming into agreement with somebody. I need, I need you to agree with me on that. I need somebody to agree with me on that. And lift up your hands. Fall to your knees and lift up your hands. Yeah, there have been times, I know I'm not the only one, I've had to pull over. Hallelujah, on the side of the road. So I could lift up my hands. And cry out to the Lord. This is what we need to understand. There is power in us lifting up our hands. Lifting up our hands will change things. Now, let's get back to this scripture. What is interesting about this text as we keep reading in Micah chapter 5 is that God tells them all of this. He tells them all of this in the word. That you're going to be like a lion. You're going to be like the grass in the morning amongst, you know, you're the remnant. And you're like the dew in the morning on the grass among, you know, your adversaries. You, you are like a lion in the forest among your uh the beasts of the field. He tells them all of this. He says, and when you lift up your hands, all of them going to be defeated. But then he starts something in chapter 10. This is uh, verse 10. This is where it gets good. He says, and then that day declares the Lord, I will destroy your horses. My horses? Why are you going to destroy my horses? He said, I'm going to destroy and demolish your chariots. I'm going to destroy your cities and your land. I'm going to tear down your fortresses. He said, I'm going to destroy your, your soothsayers. He said, I'm going to come after your fortune tellers. I'm going to destroy your idols and all of the sacred things. And you will know, listen. Man. He said, I'm going to destroy. He said, because no longer... Is verse 13. No longer will you worship with my hands what your hands have made. He just told us to lift up our hands in victory. He said when we lift up our hands, we will have victory over our enemies. He said, but all this other stuff you doing, you got to stop all that. My God, he said, you didn't put your strength in your horses, in your Mercedes, in your Bentley, in your BMW, in your Range Rover. What, what are you riding on? What, what high horse are you on in your job, in your title, in your education? He said, nope, I'm going to knock you off of that. Ha! I told you. He said, I'm a, hey, God, I'm going to destroy your horses. Because I already told you how to get victory over your enemy. It's not how you riding. It's not how you living. It ain't got nothing to do with you. It's the hands that I have given you. And now you want to go? All that stuff you didn't create it? Listen, God is so good. He tells you how to get the victory. And he loves on you. Before he comes and says, now give me that. <laughs> Now give me that. You didn't put your strength in that. Now give me that. You didn't put your hope in that. Now give me that. You didn't put your hope in these chariots. Chari the thing that you can stand on. See, you ride in on horses, but you stand on a chariot and you tell it to go. What you standing on and ain't got nothing to do with the word? What you standing on? What you standing on? You you what what you standing on? Your wife? And her abilities, your your husband and his abilities. What what are you standing on? What they try to bring to the table? What what you standing on? What what did you better be standing on? Are the promises of God, the Word of God that has been declared over your life? What should be? So when you lift up your hands, you already know you got the victory. You already know you gonna ride in on triumph, on Jesus, on His Word and on His promise. Hallelujah! With the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Goodness and mercy following you. Hallelujah. You being hedged in by the Holy Spirit with your ministering angels going before you. That's how you got to ride in. You can't ride in on your own strength. You can't ride in on the horses and, and things that you have went and acquired. Oh, my God. What are you standing on, boo? 
Huh? What if you connected yourself with? Because you know, when you're on a chariot, you got to hold on to some reins. So what reins are you holding on to? You better be holding on to the one who rules and reigns. But he already then told you. He's already encouraged you. He's already given you the word that your lifted hands is going to bring you victory. Before you even see the victory. He said, but let me tell you, there's some things I need to get right with you. I need to get these things right with you Tuesday. I need, to, I need you to understand. He said, I'm going to destroy your fortresses. The things you built up around you. Hallelujah. See, fortresses were not only to keep people out, but they were also built to not let let things out, but primarily not to let things in. So what is it that you don't want to let in? Somebody who has a good word of advice for you, some wise counsel, but because you prideful and you think you know everything with your ego or your vanity that nobody can't tell you nothing. I already know that. I already know that. I know. I know. I know. You ain't got to tell me that. I know. No, you don't. Because if you knew, nobody would have to tell you. The issue is you don't want to hear it. That's what you really should be saying. I don't want to hear that. <coughs> a fool says there is no God. My God. A fool says nobody can tell you nothing. Listen, I get so sick of people saying stuff like, because you ain't got no kids, you don't know what it's like. Because you ain't never been married, you don't know. Now, I absolutely honor marriage. Absolutely. But if somebody has got a little bit of wisdom, just a couple of, you know, got a little bit of wisdom, and they just trying to tell you something, in particular if it's from the word of God, you might want to, you know, just listen. Like, okay, no, they ain't been married 50 years. So because the person's only been married five years, the person who's been married, you know, 20 years, you can't receive from the one who's been married five. I tell people this all the time. You have pastors who are single, but their churches are full. And they're teaching and preaching on marriage, you know, quite often and counseling couples. So you don't go to a church. And I actually had somebody say to me, I'm not going to go to a church with a pastor that's single. Okay, well, that's your preference. That's cool. So uh, uh, someone who's worked with children for 20, 30 years, but has not birthed any, they can't speak into the situation with you and your children. I, I know, I know, but you, you know, you don't understand. No, you don't understand. Because a fool says, I don't want to receive godly counsel. I don't want to see receive wisdom. So the Bible says right here in Micah chapter 5, he said, I'm going to tear down your fortresses, all the stuff you hide behind, all the stuff, your lashes, your makeup, your 50 million wigs, glory to God, your, your button-down suits, bruh, your briefcase, your car, your talent. What, what are you hiding behind? When, when people build a fort, when, when fortresses were built, they, become, they can become a stronghold. So what is the stronghold in your life? You know, I'm not saying that y'all who wear lashes and wigs and makeups that you're hiding behind anything. I'm just saying. All I'm saying is anything that you can, it becomes a mask for you. That you can't be your real self. That has become a stronghold for you. The Bible says that Jesus is your stronghold. So anything that you have built up around you and strongholds by definition, biblically, spiritually, mean that they are a wall of lies. So your fortress of lies. What is the fort? Good morning, Sister Pamela. What is the fortress of lies that you are living behind? Let me help you. I can't do this. I can't do that. I'll never be this. I'll never be that. That, that good things will never happen to me. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Healing ain't real. Prophecy ain't real. All churches are jacked up. All pastors are scoundrels. What lies? And so therefore you don't go to church. Therefore you won't bring your tithes. What lies has been built up that you're hiding behind? The word says, the word says, God's word says, he said, I'm going to tear down your fortress. He said, then I will destroy your idols and your sacred monuments. What are your idols? What do you idolize? I remember years ago, I had, I used to be attacked in my dreams by the devil. Yes, he would. And I was saved. And he would come into my dreams. And when the enemy would come into my dreams, I would always call on my mother. Any of you know me, I love me some Martha Jane Tate, okay? And one day, one time, the devil said to me, she can't help you. And I remember in that dream, I lifted up my hand. That when I came out of that dream, good God Almighty, hot up, hey! My hands was lifted. 
When I came out, I'm remembering this right now. When I came out of that dream, oh God, my hands was lifted. And I said, I said, oh God, in the dream, I said, oh God. And when I woke up, the Lord said to me, your mother's name is not the name you can call on against the enemy. You can't say mama. Because the enemy, that don't work with him. The only name that the enemy trembles, demons trembles, and the enemy flees from is the name of Jesus with lifted hands. Good God Almighty. Ha! Ah, Jesus. Good God Almighty, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so, in my life, I had made my mom an idol. I still, I honor her. I honor her. Worship her, not in the means by which we worship God, because he's holy and perfect, but I honor her. And God had to show me, you were putting your dependence and your strength on your mom. And first of all, it's not fair for you to do that. I remember when the Lord showed me that's what I was doing with my pastor. I was putting too much onus and responsibility on him to tell me yay or nay, to go, to stay, to do or not to do. And God was like, I'm your God. Talk to me. I'm going to show you what to do. And either he will confirm it or he won't. Either your mama will confirm it or she won't. But if I tell you to do it and it lines up with my word and I tell you to go, whether it's pray about it and wait. And but I say go now because now you've been released. You better do what I said. Because it's not even fair for you to put all of that responsibility on them. And sometimes as our pastors and our leaders, they take it on. That their responsibility, beloved, is not to be the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. Is not to be our Holy Spirit. Their responsibility is to watch over our souls. To pray for us. To instruct us in the ways of God. So, the Lord had to show me that that's what I had done. I had put an idol over my pastor. I put an idol over my mother. But God said, I'm going to destroy him. I'm going to destroy your idols. They ain't going to kill your pastor or your mom. I'm not saying that. He said, but the things in your heart that you put above him are made equal to him. He said, I need you to understand. I'm the only one that you need to idolize. Ha <laughs> ha! Glory to God. Look up to him. Hallelujah. Seek him for godly counsel. Hallelujah. Let him pray. But you look up, you idolize me. He said, you idolize me. He said, I'm going to destroy your sacred monuments. He said, and you will no longer worship what the hands I gave you to make things that I didn't tell you to build. I didn't tell you to go find soothsayers. I didn't tell you to build up no fortresses. I didn't tell you to go and make idols of man. He said, I didn't tell you to, to go buy chariots and, and, uh, and, and get them ride in on your horses and come in on all your pride. He said, no, 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 no. I didn't tell you to do any of that. I told you to use the hands I gave you to lift them up in worship and praise and victory to me. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight your battles. I'm going to fight your battles. He says so. He said, and if you do this, he said, if you do this, he said, he said, um, if you do this, he said, all the nations will know that you obey me. He said, they'll know. They'll know that you, that you are with me and I am with you. He said, now listen to what the Lord is saying. This, this jumps in to chapter 6, and I'm going to be done. He said, stand up and plead your case. He said, he said, you can plead your case. He said, but stand up now. He said, my people, he said, uh, he said, you tried my patience, but I'm never going to leave you. You tested me with horses and chariots and fortresses and, and idols and, and soothsayers and fortune tellers. He said, you tested me. You tested me and all that, but I'm, I'm not, I never left you. I'm not going to leave you. 
you went and, and you did that with that man or with that woman. He said, but I didn't leave you. You used your hands to do things that are not of me. You shook hands and came into agreement with people I didn't tell you to come into agreement with. You stole, you lied, you cheated. You used your body to do things that I didn't tell you to do. He says, so, but but I'm never I'm not leaving you. I ain't going nowhere. We good. He said, but I need you to understand that once you put your hands to the plow of the work of the kingdom that I've called you to do, that I've created to advance my kingdom. He said, you can't, you can't put your hands to the other stuff too. I want you to understand something, beloved. Wherever you are being tempted, wherever you are being challenged, is where God wants to use you the most. Wherever you are being tempted, when the Lord showed me, the one of the reasons that, because I used to be a big liar, right? I think I told you that before. <laughs> Glory to God. I used to be a big liar. And the Lord said, because I wanted to use your mouth to preach the gospel, to teach the truth, to the truth, me, the word, then the enemy would want you to lie. The reason I allowed you, he didn't do it to me. There were choices that were either made for me, against me, or that I made. When you were uh, touched as a young girl inappropriately, it opened the door to you being promiscuous as an adolescent. And then when I closed the door, when God closed the door in my, what was that, 30? Somewhere in there, 29, 30. He said, I was taking it back. Because you lifted your hands to me. Because you cried out to me for help. And I remember that. I remember when I said, God, I don't want to be with another man until he's my husband. And I remember that day that I fell on my knees in the hallway of my apartment. And I lifted up my hands and I said, God, keep. Lord, I don't want to steal anymore. I don't want to lie anymore. I don't want to be with anybody. I want to serve you. And thus began the journey of the call to ministry. I sought the Lord to purify my body before I ever accepted the call to ministry. That was probably, yeah, it was, it was three years later. Two, three years later. But what I'm saying to you, beloved, I knew, I understand now why in those years of what happened as a child and then what, what, what happened in being promiscuous as a teenager and then coming into young adulthood and God saying, I'm going to draw you to me, was so that today I can be used to encourage young girls. I can be real with them and they receive me. I can be transparent. The reason the enemy would want to use my hands to steal was because I was to lay hands as an elder, lay hands on the sick and they recover. You don't understand that all of this stuff that the word is talking about in Micah 5, us, our, our idols, our pride, our vanity, our struggles, our going after things that are not of God to tell us what God is saying with the soothsayers and the fortune tellers. We got prophets in the kingdom. You don't need a fortune teller. You don't, you don't, you don't need them. To talk to the dead? What does the dead have to do with the living? But what he wants us to understand is that there's power. When you fall to your knees, when you pull over on the side of the road, when you're in the shower, when you're at the sink washing dishes, 
When you just have a moment and sit up in your bed and you lift up your hands and say, Lord, hear my, help me. I need your strength. I need your answer. You told me I'm the lion in the forest. Good God Almighty, you told me I will be like the dew on the grass. You told me I can trample over my enemies. You told me that my, I already have the victory. The fact that I'm lifting up my hands is it, just coming in agreement with you, Lord. That I know that I have the victory already. And this is where God wants us to get to. To trust him. To trust him. Yeah. Out of the death experience. Amen, Sister Yvette. Evangelist Yvette. God is a deliverer. I will say it until you get it. All you need is the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and the word of Jesus. Jesus is the word. His blood was his sacrifice. And he would have did it just for you. If there was nobody else in this earth that says, here am I, save my soul, Jesus would have went to the cross for you. And this is what you must understand. You are a lion amongst your enemies. You are the refreshing, beautiful, falling dew when there is craziness around you. This is who you can be. This is who God wants you to be. So Father, we lift up our hands. We lift up our hands to you, Lord. And we say thank you. We say thank you. We say, bless your name. And so, Father, on our knees, as we sit, as we sit on the sides of our bed, as we are here in this moment, God, I thank you, Lord, that you've never left us, you've never forsaken us, you've never forgotten about us. Our names are not only written in the Lamb's Book of Life, but our names are written in the palm of your hands. So when you lift up your hands, God, oh, God, Everyone under the sound of my voice, Yvette's name is written in your palm of your hand. Donna's name is written in the palm of your hand. Hallelujah, God. Bless your name, oh God. Kimberly's name is written in the palm of your hand. God, I thank you. Pamela's name is written in the palm of your hand. Gloria's name is written in the palm of your hand. God, Marcia's name. Warren's name. Devin's name. God, I thank you. I thank you for the blood. I thank you for truth. Viva's name is written in the palm of your hand. Hallelujah, God. Sister Hughes and Brother Carl and Brother Richard, God. Hallelujah. Jesse's name is written in the palm of your hand. Sister Chandra's name is written in the palm of your hand. Hallelujah. Joyce's name. Frank's name. Hallelujah, God. Charles's name, God. Robert's name, God. Hallelujah, God. Sister Norwood, God. Keisha's name, God. Glory to God is written in the palm of his hand. So when he lifts up his hand, hallelujah, your name, your name, your name, your face comes before him. My name is written in the palm of his hand. Hallelujah. God, Brenda, Jean, Kika, Columbus, Gardis, hallelujah. Put your family's name out there, beloved. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Martha's name is written. Hallelujah, God. Simone and Sarah, Sophia, God, Sydney and baby Shannon and Harper, oh God. Hallelujah. Kieran and Karen and uh, Karen, Gerard and Joshua, God. Hallelujah. And Jerry, God. And Rarty, God, in the name of Jesus. Their names are written in the palm of their your hand, oh God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah. Columbus and Gardas. Hallelujah. D and Christine and Jerome and Shireen and Sh and God, hallelujah, Chanel and Brittany and Malcolm, God, hallelujah, God, Kyra, Kara, God, in the name of Jesus, names are written, names are written, names are written, hallelujah, God, we thank you today, we thank you, hallelujah, God, we thank you, that our names are written in the palm of your hand, lifted hands, with our hands lifted up, and our hearts filled with praise. With a heart of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. We bless. We bless. We bless. We bless. We bless. We bless. We bless thee, O Lord. Thank you for the victory that comes in advance. 
Hallelujah. My God, children. Hallelujah, God. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Beth's name, oh God. Blanche's name, oh God. Hallelujah. Those struggling, God. Hallelujah. Those in the midst of a battle, God. Their names are written. Names are written in the palm of your hand, oh God. And so we thank you for the victory that comes when we lift up our hands unto you. We love you today, Daddy. And we bless your holy name. Hallelujah. When we lift up our hands unto you, things change. We get the victory in advance. Amen. I thank you. I love you with the love of the Lord. The Lord says the same. We will be together next week. Share this with someone. Tag someone. Add someone. Repost it. I pray that uh, you gained something or heard something today. Uh, that blesses your soul. Amen. We are still celebrating my birthday month. Amen. And on this Saturday, ladies, we will be at um, Donato's Pizza. I think it's on Ditch, 86th and Ditch in the uh, Marsh Plaza. Marsh, Marsh is no longer there. But we will be meeting there at 630. Uh, and I do pray that you join us. Just, you know, pizza and soda just to do girl time. Amen. I love you, sis. Donna, I love you. I love you so much. That's that's my girl right there. I posted, uh, I have a good friend, um, Gwen. Her birthday was yesterday. And I posted um, one of my three longest, oldest friends. And I'm not in age, but in the number of years. And Donna, Joanna, and Gwen. Been friends since ninth grade, 10th grade, high school. Uh, so I love, I love me some Donna Atkins. I love me some you. So, ladies, if you're available, uh, join me as we continue to celebrate 50 plus one. Carla, I need to see you, amen, uh, at Donato's Pizza on Saturday, 6.30. Just come on in and order you a little personal pan pizza and a soda, and we just going to sit down and have some girl talk, amen. M married or single. And then on the 19th, we are at uh, Paint. What is it? Painting. Painting with a <gasps> painting with a twist. 8804, I believe, Michigan Road. You do have to pay in advance for that. It's $35. We're gonna have a great time. Um, just you know, painting with a twist. Amen. And uh, so I love you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Stay tuned for some trainings that are coming up for a writer's workshop for our next book. Uh, our next book, Maximizing Your Talent. So if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business owner, if you have advanced in corporate and you would like to be a part of that um, next book project, please let me know. And then our next speaker's training. Uh, speaker's training is in July and the writer's workshop is in August. Our book, The Mornings After, is progressing with great joy uh, with those authors and um the wonderful uh, uh, man of God, uh, Dr. Marvin L. Sapp, will actually be doing the forward in that book. So I'm excited about that. And also, what else is coming up? We're working on a play for the book, I Tasted My Tears Today, monologue, amen. And um, the documentary for the father form that is tied to my book, um, my Daddy's Demons. So by the time we roll around for the men's conference next year, my book, My Daddy's Demons, should be done. The documentary for the um, men that we will follow um, and tell their story about them connecting with their fathers from their experience um, from the forum that started in 2011 uh, up until the conference this year. So... A lot on my plate, but I love God and uh, lifted hands in victory before we get started. Falling on our knees saying, Lord, guide us, direct us. So I love you with the love of the Lord. I thank God for you. 
And uh, I pray that this message encourage someone. Amen. Share it with someone. Invite someone to join us for 5 a.m. prayer. And Yvette, I'm going to stay on it. Amen. I'm going to be here. Short of being in the hospital, dead, or on a plane, uh, <laughs> in midair, we will be here at 5 a.m. on Tuesday morning. So also pray with me. I'm just trying to decide where and how to land my... Uh, um, YouTube, uh, blog talk, uh, TV. I'm just trying to figure out where to land it, what to where. So I just, I'm just being prayerful about that. So pray in agreement with me. Amen. That all the stuff I just named, the Lord will order it and say what's for when, what's for now, what's for then. I love you with the love of the Lord. I pray you have a great and awesome Tuesday. And uh, I will see you next week. Amen. God bless you. Love you with the love of the Lord.